jealousy cycle. The jealousy cycle. Amen. Our text here talks about a relationship between King Saul and David, who was the son of Jesse. When you read in this chapter, you will see that David is now a popular young man. David had been blessed by God to be able to get rid of a nuisance to the children of Israel. This nuisance stood tall in the person of a Philistine by the name of Goliath. God blessed David to take out Goliath and Israel was able to get the victory. It was the same David who played for the king on his heart. For the Bible tells us that on occasions King Saul would have a bad spirit. But David would come in and would play on his heart and it would soothe the king. The same David was also appointed by the king to be his armor battle. Scripture even tells us that the king's son, whose name was Jonathan, became David's best friend. Scripture tells us that he became so much of a friend to David that he took off his royal robe and gave it to David. He had fine garments as the king's son that he took and he gave them also to David. Scripture said he had a sword that he gave to David, he had a bow that he gave to David, and also a belt that he had. He gave it all to David. Scripture tells us that Saul thought so much of David that he had placed him over his men of war. As a matter of fact, 1 Samuel, the 16th chapter, verse 21, says that Saul loved David. But when you read in this 18th chapter of 1 Samuel, we see that things have changed rather quickly. This 18th chapter reveals that there was a jealousy problem that existed. The text shows us how bad jealousy can be. The Bible reveals here that King Saul was jealous of David. And listen, jealousy is something that you can't take for granted. Jealousy is something that you don't just wink at. You don't just laugh at all. Jealousy is something that is not to be swept under a rug, so to speak. This passage of scripture teaches us that jealousy unchecked can be a terrible thing. As a matter of fact, this scripture teaches us that when it comes to jealousy, if we don't check ourselves, we'll end up wrecking ourselves. My brothers and sisters, it's important that we deal with this problem that many times is in our own hearts and in our own lives. This thing called jealousy is something that don't just go away by itself. If nothing gets done about it, it will get worse. This jealousy problem is something that affects and appears in many facets of life. It shows up where we are employed. It even shows up in the family. Yes, we see it many times, even in sports. Uh, it's not just in major league, but some way, somehow, it even shows up in T-ball. Jealousy is something that has reared its ugly head at pageants. Jealousy is a terrible thing. This passage here shows us that the king of Israel, King Saul, was jealous of David. Can you imagine the king being jealous of one of his servants? 
it's almost like a boss being jealous of his employee. It's like a rich man being jealous of a poor man. Here's a man who's over all the people, jealous of one that's among the people. The Bible says and reveals that Saul was jealous of David. Now the question comes, what is jealousy? Jealousy is a bad feeling or attitude toward one who is believed to have an advantage over another. Someone has defined jealousy this way by saying it's when we resent God's goodness in the lives of others and ignore God's goodness in our own lives. Yes, jealousy is a problem. Now you can't get past this problem if you pretend that it's not there. Yes, even if you pretend that it's under control, you can't get past it. James 3 and 14 says, but if you have bitter envy, another translation says, if you have bitter jealousy and strife in your heart, don't brag about it and don't lie about it. Yes, he says, uh, to be jealous is not something to boast about. The text lets me know that King Saul is jealous of David. Are y'all still with me? Now, the reason why I needed to talk about this this morning is I have some questions I need to ask you. Who are you jealous of? Is there somebody in your life that you are jealous of? Now, some of you already know that right now, even as I speak, you have a jealousy problem. Others of you have yet to discover that you are jealous. Others of us have already dealt with this and have gotten past it, but yet we're making certain that it don't come up anymore. Jealousy is a problem. Well, as I look at the text, first of all, I see what prompted this jealousy? What brought out this jealousy? I mean, just looking at Saul as king, you just can't see it automatic. But something happened that exposed the fact that King Saul had a jealousy problem. So the question is, what prompted this jealousy? Well, look at verses 6 and 7. The verse said that when David and the king and all the soldiers had come back into town, that the people had lined up to have, as it were, a kind of parade to welcome them back for the victory that they had gotten. And scripture says that the women had joined together and the women sang a song. And the song said, Saul had killed his thousands, but David had killed his tens of thousands. And when Saul heard the song, he got mad. He got angry. He got upset. He said, they're giving more credit to David than to me. I'm the king. And I ought to get more credit than that ball. <laughs> Are y'all listening to me? And consequently, it exposed Saul's jealousy. Now, the song didn't put jealousy in his heart, but the song just helped bring it out. Are y'all listening to me? Yes, this song, it was this song that, that prompted, that stirred up jealousy in uh, Saul's heart. And all I think I need to tell you, there was a little something wrong with this song. I know they meant well, but there was something wrong with the song. If you look real close to the lyrics in the song, nothing is said about God. And anytime the people of God sang 
the song and don't mention the Lord is something wrong with the song. Because if it had not been for the Lord, they would not have gotten the victory. Am I right about it? Yes, yes. They left the Lord out the song. They got David in. They even got Saul in. But they didn't say anything about the Lord. You got to be careful about listening to songs, singing songs, patting your feet to songs that don't say anything about the goodness and the person of God. Are y'all listening to me? Yeah, you know, stuff like that help you get away from the blues and, and rock and roll and all that other kind of stuff because it don't give glory to God. Are you listening to me? How you going to give glory to sing a song to thrill is gone? You know, since my baby ain't with me no more. How you going to get God going to get glory out of that? You understand what I'm saying? You know, you know close the door. Right? You know, turn off the light. You know, so how, how God going to get glory? I wish I had somebody. She's a brick house. How God gonna get glory? God ain't even mentioned in the song just because sometimes they say, Lord have mercy, they ain't got God in mind. Are y'all listening to me? So God's name was missing in the song. Now, I just believe that perhaps they meant well in this song, but they had no idea that it would stir up jealousy that was in the heart of Saul. And you know, sometimes we got to be careful what we say and do, lest we motivate some folk, stir up some folk to be jealous. Now, I must be honest, some people deliberately do things just to make somebody jealous. Are y'all listening to me? They deliberately say something where somebody who they don't like can hear to try to make them jealous. I've seen people buy cars they can't afford to make somebody jealous that they don't even like. Are y'all listening to me? I've seen women get men in trouble trying to make this other man jealous. Are y'all praying with me? Yes, I've seen people, I've seen guys run and just grab a girl and hug her just to make his old lady jealous. Jealousy ain't something to play with. This text lets us know jealousy is serious business. Yeah, so it was prompted because of a song. And secondly, I see not only the prompting of the jealousy, but in the text, I see the problem of jealousy. As I look at the problem of jealousy, the question comes, what will jealousy make a person do? As we look at Saul, he helps us to see a lot about what jealousy will make a person do. First of all, I see that jealousy will make a person defensive. Listen to that. When Saul heard this song, according to the verse, if you look there at verse 8, Saul got angry. He got mad. And this is what he said. He said, they have given David ten thousands, but they only credit me for a thousand. And then he said this. He said, and what can he have more but the king? And the next verse says, and Saul started eyeing David. He got defensive because before this, he wasn't watching it. But since they put out this song, he done started watching it because he said, I don't want this boy to get my spot. I don't want him to take my place. He got defensive. Are you listening to me? He became paranoid. Yes, he he was concerned this boy going to 
going to take my place if I don't watch it. So he kept watching David to see if David was trying to start some mess so that he could try to move him and take over. He got defensive. And listen, one way you can know you got a jealousy problem is when it bothers you when somebody outdo you, when others get credit that you don't get, when others seem like always get a pat on the back and you don't hardly get any, when you get defensive, start complaining about it, get an attitude about it, you got a jealousy problem. You got a jealousy problem. You're always bragging on me. Don't ever say nothing about me. It make me sick. Are y'all with me here? Just get defensive. Attitude change toward the person you used to speak to. Him. Now you go around. Him. Won't say nothing. Are y'all listening to me? Yes. Well, others get more credit than you. Others outdo you. What you got to always remember, I don't care how good you are at whatever you do. There's always going to be some folk who can do it better than you can. No need of tripping about that. Because God always got somebody who can do it better. As a matter of fact, Samuel told Saul in 1 Samuel 15 chapter, verse 28, when Saul was told by Samuel that because of your disobedience, the Lord has rejected you from being king over Israel. And he's going to give it to a neighbor of yours who is much better than you. God always got somebody who's better than us. That's why you ought not get all wrapped up, tied up, tangled up in yourself. Because God got somebody who can do far better than you. Are you listening to me? Yes, don't every husband, every husband in here, all of us husbands, ought always remember, don't get so caught up in you to where you think you can't be replaced. Brethren, brethren, as sure as the Lord lives, we can be replaced. And we can be replaced with somebody who is far better than we are. You run that line on them talking about, they tell you sometimes, you know, ain't nobody better than you. <laughs> God always got somebody who's better. I'm trying to help somebody. Don't get so relaxed in your situation to the point to where you think ain't nobody better. Every wife needs to know, honey, I don't care how good you cook. I don't care how good you look. I don't care how sweet you are. Baby, there's somebody who better than you. Don't get caught up in yourself. Here Saul got wrapped up in himself and he was he felt threatened by David. And whenever you are jealous, you'll get defensive. You'll feel like somebody is a threat to you. You got a jealousy problem. Are y'all praying? You got a jealousy problem. Your husband can't even speak to a woman. Without you running up there. You got a jealousy. Uh, who was that on the phone? Some men are worse than women. You understand what I'm saying? She can't turn the corner at a store without him being right behind. Watching over her shoulder. Are y'all listening to me? Yeah, jealousy. Get upset with everybody she speak to. She can't even say good morning to a brother without him looking at her front. Are y'all listening to me? Jealousy. Problem. Defensive. Defensive. Even in the church. We got that problem. In the church, some people are just defensive. Some folk think they the only one can do something. Don't want nobody else to do it. Scared somebody else gonna take their place. Don't you know one day you're gonna die? You're gonna die 
one day we gonna have your funeral and somebody don't take your place. Defensive. But there's a second thing. Jealousy will even cause you to be destructive. Look at verses 10 and 11. The verse said that, and on the morrow. Now he started hiding on Wednesday. So on Thursday, he's ready to do something. Because the verse said that the evil spirit came upon Saul. And he prophesied in the midst of the house. When it say he prophesied, now this don't, this, God don't want you to think Saul was a preacher. It don't want you to think that Saul had prophetic ability. But he pretended that he was in the spirit. You know, like some folk do in church sometimes. He, he, he pretended that he was saying. You know, he, he went through the motion. But all he was doing while they was playing the harp right there for him, he was just making his way over to the spirit. Look at me as I use my imagination. He could. y'all listen to me some folk the same way even in our churches they'll shout their way to whatever they want to do that's mischievous and they're destructive they'll hurt you that's why you can't play with this jealousy thing because jealousy if you don't check it you'll get to the point where you want to hurt somebody Cain killed Abel. Joseph's brothers put him in a pit and sold him. Am I right about it? Husbands have killed wives. Wives have killed husbands. Siblings have not been able to get along because of jealousy. Yes, some folk have ended up in the hospital behind jealousy. And many have ended up in the cemetery behind jealousy. Because jealousy, if you don't do something about it, can be destructive. He tried to kill David. But then thirdly, he teaches us here, jealousy will distance you. Look at verses 12 and 13. The verse says, and Saul was afraid of David, because the Lord was with him, and was departed from Saul. Therefore Saul removed him from him. And made him a captain over a thousand. Now, back up in verse 5. He put him over the men of war. But now, in verse 13, he demotes him. And put him over a thousand. Are you listening to me? He, he has distanced himself from a good man. Are y'all listening to me? That's what jealousy would do. Jealousy will distance you from people who are good for you. Am I right about it? Yes. Someone has truthfully said jealousy creates enemies where none exist. Yes. Jealousy will make you be an enemy to somebody who won't do you no harm. David had done nothing to hurt Saul. He had done nothing but good for Saul. But yet Saul's jealousy caused him to distance David from him. Am I right about it? Justice or jealousy will make you, yes, turn on somebody who really loves you. Jealousy will make you make an enemy out of somebody who wants the best for you. Yes, and oh, my brothers and sisters, Let's know it had to be something wrong with this because the Bible said everybody else loved David. Scripture says in verse 16, all Israel and Judah loved David. In verse 5, it says the soldiers and Saul's servants loved David. Uh, verse 7, 
verse 1 and verse 20 that to us all children loved him. Jonathan loved him. McCall loved him. Who became David's first wife. But yet Saul hated him and was jealous of him. Jealousy can run good folk out of your life. Am I right about it? But not only will it distance you from good people, but jealousy will distance you from God. Yes, it will push you further away from God. I got to hurry up and close now. But uh, Jesus tells us in Matthew 25 about a man who gave out talents. He said to one, he gave five. To the second man, he gave two. And to the third man, he gave only one talent. And uh, Jesus said, it's the man who received the one talent that uh, we have a problem with. Someone has suggested that perhaps the one who had received the one talent was jealous of the fact that the others had received more than he received. And as a result, he had an attitude toward the owner. He dug a hole and buried it. And uh, he had an attitude toward the owner saying, I know that you're always reaping where you have them yeah. And uh, I got your one talent. Here it is. Yeah. Yes. And Jesus said that uh, the owner took the one talent away from him and gave it to the man who had t five talents. Yeah. And uh, it would happen because he had an attitude with the owner. And I stop by to tell you, my brothers and sisters, when you have a jealousy problem, it will distance you from God. And uh, you know as well as I that we can't afford for God to be at a distance from us. We need God to be with us. Am I right about it? But finally, as I close here, jealousy will make a person deceitful. In verse 21, Saul said, I give my daughter McCall to David so that she can be a snare to him. And in verse 25, he said, I'm going to send him out to fight with the Philistines. And I'm hoping that they'll kill him on the battlefield. Now, he pretended, yes, that he had a job for David, but the hidden agenda was he hoped that David wouldn't make it back. Yeah. And uh, when you have a jealousy problem, it'll make you lie. Yeah. yeah, when you have a jealousy problem, it'll cause you to pretend. Yeah. Yes, when you have a jealousy problem, it will cause you to make like. Yeah, it will cause you to be a phony. Yeah, well, I got one more thing to tell you. Not only do I see what prompted the jealousy, and not only do I see the problem of jealousy, but I need to tell you there is a plan to handle jealousy. Yeah, now if you have the jealousy problem like Saul had, yeah, the first thing you need to do is admit that you have a jealousy problem. Yeah, just be honest with yourself and say, Lord, I have a jealousy problem. And the second thing we need to do is repent of the problem. Yes, it is to say, Lord, I'm willing to let it go. Yes, and then you need to ask God to help you to overcome the jealousy problem. Yes, because you can't get rid of any sin unless the Lord help you. Am I right? But then, if you want to overcome the jealousy problem, you need to celebrate the, the success of somebody else. 
again. You ought to be glad when you see others do good. Yes, you ought to be glad to see God blessing someone else. Yes, but if you want to overcome it, you got to also remember to do what God said do. Hang on, all right. Just be obedient to the word of God. Hang on, all right. His word said, love everybody. Have I got a witness here? He said, love your neighbor as you love yourself. Hang on, all right. But then if you want to overcome it, you got to have an attitude of gratitude. Ain't God all right? If you just start counting your blessings, you don't have time to be jealous of somebody else. Yeah, I say all the time what I keep on saying. I don't have time to be jealous of what somebody else have. And the reason why is I'm too busy thanking God for everything he's doing for me yes and I'm glad to see God open doors for somebody else thank God all right so my brothers and sisters there is victory over jealousy have I got a witness but then on the other hand there might be some of us in here today we are victims of somebody who's jealous of us did you hear me somebody don't like you because you have what you have yeah somebody don't like you because you know what you know Yes, somebody don't like you. Yes, because you do what you're able to do. Hang on, all right. Well, the question comes, preacher, how do you handle somebody that's jealous of you? Well, the text said David behaved himself wisely. Hang God all right. You don't have to respond to every negative thing somebody say about you. Did you hear me? You don't have to do something about every negative thing somebody do for you. Something you just let it come in one ear and go out the other. Hang God all right. Something you just gotta learn to hold your peace and let God fight your battle. Am I right about it? Behave yourself. Yes. If they talk about your children, don't say nothing back. Did you hear me? If they talk bad about you, say something good about them when the time comes. Ain't God all right? But then secondly, yes, if you're going to handle people that's jealous of you, always remember the Lord is with you. Ain't God all right? David could do it because the Lord was with him. Well, preacher, how do you know that the Lord was with David? I'll tell you how I knew. Every time Saul threw a spear at him, the Bible said he got out of the way. Ain't God all right? Anybody in here, you got some folk in your life. They threw some dirty stuff at you. But God blessed you to get out the way. Ain't God all right? Wow! Anybody here know he got power to help you get out the way? Ain't God all right? Oh, yeah! I know he will. He'll help you to survive. When they want to take you out, he'll keep you up. When they're trying to bring you down, won't he do it? Oh, yeah. Good God Almighty, I got the clothes. Yes, but if you're going to handle people 
who are jealous of you, you got to know how to stay away from them. Thank God, all right. Eventually, David couldn't come play for him no more. Eventually, David had to leave and get away from Saul. Some people in your life, you just got to get away from. Have I got a witness? Anybody here know that you are able to survive a jealousy attack? Anybody here ever survived a jealousy attack? They talked about you. They set a trap for you. But you made it through because God made you a survivor. Thank God, all right. Well, there's another man who experienced somebody who had a jealousy attack and his name is Jesus. The religious leaders were jealous of him. They were jealous because he gave sight to the blind. They were jealous because he cleansed spotted lepers. They were jealous because he raised folk who had died. Yes, they put him on a cross out on the hill called Calvary. They thought they were getting rid of him. Am I right? He died. But early Sunday morning, he made a comeback. Thank God, all right. And I need to tell you, in life sometime, you might have a setback. But Jesus can give you a comeback. Thank God, all right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Don't have to be jealous because what he done for others, he can do it for you. Anybody here, don't mind being the witness that God is blessing you. Won't he do it over and over and over again? He will. 